got a haircut and I have three FOs, which I don't even know who I am anymore. So I thought I wasn't going to be a lot of, do a lot of knitting, but I've been pretty productive. Uh, let's check it all out. I will see you on the other side. Welcome and thank you for joining me for episode 41 of Gary Knits, Gary Rides, a craftivism podcast at the intersection of making things and doing good. My name is Gary. I am a knitter. I am a crocheter. And for the past five years, I have been a cyclist and fundraiser for AIDS Life Cycle, a 545-mile, seven-day bike journey from San Francisco to Los Angeles, raising money for the life-saving work of the San Francisco AIDS Foundation and the Los Angeles LGBT Center. How is everyone doing? It is a beautiful spring day here in Southern California. I should probably be on my bike riding, but I've been doing so much training recently that I, I have to take some breaks. Otherwise, I will just uh, burn myself out and uh, not achieve the goals that I want to in terms of uh, the training but it is a beautiful day and I should probably be out there doing it, but I'm going to spend a few minutes chatting with you all about what is going on in my world with training and fundraising and knitting. So it's been, um, as always around here, it's been a busy uh, couple of weeks since I did this. We've had some fun. We went to the symphony, saw Tchaikovsky and something. Um, I can't remember. We also uh, went to the theater. We saw the Broadway touring production of the latest, well, the only revival of Funny Girl, um, which I was happy to see because I've seen the movie, but obviously it's never been revived on Broadway, so I have not seen the actual show. And the performances were great. It is a show with a lot of great songs in it. It is not, however, I think, a great show, and I can see why it wasn't uh, revived um, since Barbara Streisand did it back in the, in the original. Um, great songs. The performances were great. We saw an understudy in the role of Fanny Bryce, but she was fantastic, and apparently the woman who is playing it as, as the normal uh, the normal lead is also fantastic. Melissa Manchester was in it as uh, Fanny Rice's mom. She was great. So the cast was great. I just, I just don't think it's a great, um, don't think it's a great show. But I'm always happy for um, a historical perspective to to see uh, shows. It probably would have been better off as one of these like city center encore things where they do it in like a limited run, almost like a concert version. Be that as it may, it's great. Always great to go to the theater good, bad, or indifferent. I'm always happy to uh, to see live theater, uh, especially out here when we're so far from um, Broadway. Um, been doing a lot of training, as I, I mentioned. The other thing I should say, well, let's talk about training. I am up to this week doing 170 miles a week. So I sort of shift between making my long rides longer and layering in additional rides. So I think there's a good balance between building up to day, consecutive day riding, which is very important from um, the perspective of the ride, because I think that's actually the biggest challenge is getting up seven days in a row and doing it. It's not doing the 100 mile day, um, although that's challenging. Um, it's really the on day three and four, <laughs> waking up and being like, oh, Got to get back on that uh, on that bike. So I kind of try to build in some consecutive day training in there, building up to uh, at the end of my training, I will do two 80-mile days back-to-back. -back. I will also do 100-mile day somewhere in there. Um, and I just found out that the bikes don't have to be on the trucks until like two or three days before I head out to San Francisco. So it does extend the calendar, training calendar, a little bit. Uh, I'm still going to try to hit my peak kind of right before the 15th of May and then just do a couple of shorter rides um, as I head into the, uh, to the, to the end. So uh, that's been going on. 
fundraising. We're getting closer every single day. Uh, currently, I am sitting, if you look at my fundraising page, which is linked down below in the show notes, here is a QR code. If you are not watching this on your device and you want to scan that and go to the show notes, um, I should have mentioned up front that you can find me at Instagram at Gary Nitz, Gary Rides, and on Ravelry as Gary Nitz and Rides. But if you go down to the show notes uh, below to my AIDS Lifecycle fundraising page and clicked on that, you would see that as of today, I'm sitting at about $44,725. Um, that is within spitting distance of my goal of $60,000 for this year, which would put me over $200,000 uh, since I started the ride back in 2019. So I'm feeling really good about that. I still have a couple of big pieces of money coming in that I know about. Um, we'll talk about Stitch Out Loud here in a minute. So I'm feeling good about where I am, but there's still obviously uh, some, some room to go. And I am currently sitting in the number two position overall. I think that will also change. Um, there are a couple of big fundraisers who are longtime riders, big fundraisers that are still behind me and they are coming up very quickly. So I expect that I will get surpassed at some point, but it's kind of nice to be in the, the numbers two, <laughs> number two spot um, right now. So um, in terms of fundraising, I mentioned Stitch Out Loud as one of the big chunks of money that I know is coming. We closed down the collection sales. So thank you, thank you, thank you to everyone who shopped the collection, who bought some yarn, who bought some notions. Thank you also to all of the dyers and artists who contributed to the, the collection. It was one of the most fun things that I have done in the knitting space, and it ended up actually also being... Um, a very positive fundraising experience for me. So we sold over, well, we sold 575 units across yarn and notions, and that is going to allow me to make a um, 7,552, I think that's right, dollar donation to AIDS Lifecycle. Uh, once I get all of the wholesale orders um, paid. Most of them are. I'm just, uh, there's a few people that um, I still need to connect to or maybe waiting until they dye up the yarn and, and sh to invoice me. But once that's all paid out, um, I will then make that donation to, uh, to AIDS Lifecycle. So that's going to be a nice big step up towards my $60,000 um, $60, goal. So I hope everyone who wanted to shop the collection uh, had a chance to buy what they were looking for. I'm going to talk a little bit in, down the road about one of the projects that I have I have planned because it kind of ties into one of my acquisitions this uh, the last couple of weeks. Um, but if for whatever reason you missed out on the collection, you didn't find out about it in time, you thought about it, forgot about it, um, there is still going to be a chance for you to get your hands on some of that yarn. So stay tuned. At the very end, I will talk about what is going to happen with that. Um, so that is it, kind of what's been going on the last couple of weeks in terms of life stuff, training stuff, fundraising stuff. Um, in terms of craftivism for this episode, I have several things that have come across my feed in the last couple of weeks that I wanted to highlight. First is from Die Hard Yarns. Um, which is a local yarn store in Oak Park, Illinois. And they are trying to raise $2,000 in the month of April to donate to World Central Kitchen. You may be familiar with World Central Kitchen. It is an organization that was started by Chef um, Jose Andres, who go around the world um, to problem areas and deliver food to the people in those areas. You may also have seen in the last week or so that I believe it is seven of the workers from World Central Kitchen who were working in Gaza were killed by Israeli bombs. And so they, I think they have pulled out of, of Gaza for the time being. 
Uh, so Die Hard Yarns in Oak Park, Illinois is trying to raise $2,000 to donate to World Central Kitchen. So they are donating 10% of all of their sales through the 30th of the month uh, to that organization. They have a bunch of things on their website, uh, which will be linked down below, uh, that are 35% off. I think they said there's also some sale on classes. And I think it, right now all Malabrigo yarn is, is on sale. So go check that out. Some great bargains to be had. And 10% of all sales are going to be donated to uh, World Central, Central Kitchen um, in the light of what went on in uh, to their workers in Gaza, which is awful. Um, I just wanted to mention, many of you know Vincent from Vesuvio, Vesuvio's Crafts, um, an amazing uh, designer, knit and crochet, I believe. Um, he has, um, he was on Knit Stars. He's, he's a big name in the, in the business. But he was highlighting this, uh, this week that his brother, who does a lot of the videography for his Craft Academy tutorials and things like that, um, is also a filmmaker and is looking to try to get his first short film or a short film, I don't know if it is his first, um, up and made and out into to theaters. The name of the film is Glide. And so Vincent has started up an Indiegogo campaign um, to help his brother uh, get the supplies and equipment that he needs to make this short film a reality. Um, links down below, there are several different tiers and you get um, different... Uh, rewards, I guess, is what you would call them for the different tiers in terms of a, you know, ticket to the to the premiere or some merch or something like that. So um, go check out Vincent's um, Indiegogo for his brother's film Glide down below as well. Um, another one which I'm sure many of you have heard of, but it came up again and I realized I never really mentioned it. Um, but it's an organization called the Loose Ends Project, and the reason it came up this week is that Lewis from Brooklyn Boy Knits has partnered up with Joanne to Joanne Fabrics to promote this. Um, the project was started, I don't know when, a couple years ago, but it is a way for folks to finish projects that have been started by someone who has then deceased or died. Um, and so they pair makers up with projects that have been left behind um, that are often held onto by loved ones of the person, uh, the deceased person, and they send the, the project um, in whatever state it is in to the finisher, and they then try to um, finish up the project and re-deliver it to the, to, to the loved one of the person who, who left it behind. So Joanne has offered up a discount to any finishers who take on one of the Loose Ends project projects. Um, and also I think of their stores as a meetup place for the handoff of, of projects either before they're finished or, or after they're finished. And Lewis is um, sort of on board as an amb ambassador for, for the whole collaboration between Joanne and the Loose Ends project. So go check out Loose Ends project. Um, it's, it's, it is, near and dear to my heart because I have a similar project, not exactly the same, but my grandmother, uh, when I first started knitting, um, and she was no longer able to knit. She was a, a lifelong crafter and a talented quilter, talented knitter. She did this Afghan, I think, that behind me when uh, my mother was pregnant with me. Um, and I have quilts and afghans and things that she's made. But anyway, when I first started knitting, um, and she was giving me some of her old metal needles and scraps of yarn and things like that, she said she had found this project. Um, it was an afghan project. Um, had all the yarn, some really squeaky acrylic yarn from Kmart, and that she had the pattern. But she at that point in her life, she was in her 90s already, could not figure out, make heads or tails of where she was or how to get started again. Gave it to me and said, you know, if, if, you, if, you, want, if you can figure it out, you know, it's yours to, to, to work on. And so I, even in that early stage of my knitting, I was able to kind of piece together kind of where she was in it 
figured out the pattern and I was able to to finish it. It's one of my most treasured possessions. It's sitting on the guest room uh, bed. You've all probably seen it. If you've seen any pictures of me taking uh, pictures of yarn for D-Stash on, on that bed, that's the bed, that's the bed where it is. Um, but it's definitely like one of the things that like in a natural <laughs> disaster, I would grab to take with me uh, out of this house. So I think it's just a lovely effort that the Lucens Project is, is, is doing to sort of bring some closure to not only the projects, but to what it means to the loved ones who have been left behind. So um, go check that out. Links are down below to both the collaboration with Joanne and Lucens Project, um, their main website, where you can find a project and get, get working on it. Um, in terms of my own stuff, uh, I mentioned Stitch Out Loud is done, but the day that Stitch Out Loud <laughs> closed, we kicked off the final D-Stash for Good fiber auction of this fundraising season. Um, we are doing it a little bit differently. It is no longer being done on Instagram. If you've participated before, you know my feelings about Instagram as a venue for that. It's very convenient, but it's fraught with all sorts of technical difficulties. So move to a website called 32 Auctions. It seems to be running really, really well, very, very smoothly so far. Fingers crossed that when the thing closes down, the invoicing and all that stuff will also be very, very smooth. So it's, I'll put the, the link up here, the link will down below, 32auctions.com slash dstash for good. There's 380 listings. It is $16,000 worth of mainly yarn. There's some books and things in there as well. And currently we're about, I don't know, five days in. Um, currently things are trading at just under a 60% discount to full retail value. So I know there's some room to run based on where these things have, have gone before. Typically at the end of the day, things are probably going to trade anywhere between a 30, 40% discount to, um, uh, to retail, depending on the, depending on the item. Almost everything is starting at $10 per skein or under. I had been saying everything, but then I didn't think about it. I put, there's some very special skeins of Lola Bean Yarn Co. that's from the, her hip hop holiday countdown. I bought the whole set, an extra set, and I'm going to be happy to keep that if nobody wants to pay that. But that one, those are not trading, starting at $10 a skein or under. Um, but everything else is. And it's been going really well so far. I think we're just under $7,000 raised, hoping to get to nine. I think we'll be able to do that. There are less than a week left. Uh, it is going to shut down on the 15th at 8 a.m., Pacific time. And that'll be the last really big fundraiser for AIDS life cycle this year. There'll be a couple more little things. We've obviously got the knit along and crochet along going on now. There will be a pride knit along and crochet along. Um, so that'll be another smaller thing right at the very end of, of the fundraising. More just for completion sake than anything. I, I, I'm hoping by the time that that kicks off um, that we I will be over my fundraising goal. So on the knit along and crochet along that is continuing the spring. Um, first round of prizes went out. I'm going to do second round of prizes probably tomorrow or the next day. So get your photos posted either on our Ravelry group or um, on Instagram using the End Aids Cal Cal <laughs> Spring 24 hashtag. And I just realized I have drawn the names for the first round of prizes, but did not let people know that they'd won. So I will do that in the next 24 hours. Maybe I'll do it all at the same time when I when I draw the second round of uh, second round of prizes. Um, that's going to wrap up at the end of April, and then we will be heading into the Pride Knit Along and Crochet Along. So in the next couple of weeks, look for an announcement about that. I think it's going to be a lot of fun. We have a pride-themed shawl, and then we also have a really fun sock project um, as well, which you could make pride-themed depending on the yarn that you uh, that you choose. There are going to be yarn kits for the shawl, not for the socks, so it's going to be another opportunity to stash dive. Um, I think that I'm not giving away too much, that I think that there is a scrappy element to the sock, so even better. Uh, so stay tuned for those, and that will... Um, the knit along itself will start June 1st when I'm on my bike and run through the, the rest of the month. I should also mention 
that I am going to be participating, and you can double dip for sure, um, in something called the Pride Pod Mal. So it is going to be a make-along that runs during Pride Month, um, a group of LGBTQIA plus podcasters are going to, in the lead up to Pride, highlight some LGBTQIA plus dyers and designers and bag makers and notion makers. And then during the month of June, folks can work on any project with yarn from any of those dyers and designers, bags from the makers. And it's just going to be very chill and fun, just a way to celebrate um, the LGBTQIA plus community within the fiber community. So there is a Ravelry group for that. So if you go over to Ravelry and I'll link down below, uh, it's Pride Pod Mal. Um, I don't think there's a thread yet for whips and FOs and things like that, but it will get up there. Right now there's a couple of Google Docs uh, listing some podcasters, listing some dyers and designers. So if you know any podcasters or uh, dyers, designers or makers in that community, um, send them over there, get them signed up so that, uh, folks can, uh, check them out in the, in the resources guide there. So that's, what's kind of coming up for, uh, for June, um, longer term look out for some from craftivism, uh, ideas, but I thought those first three, um, diehard yarns and Vesuvio and the loose ends projects were really, really, um, really, really cool. So, and uh, as always, if, if you all come across things in your feed, I can't see everything. I, please, please, please send them my way. I love to highlight things that other people in the community are doing to help make the world a little bit of a brighter, um, a brighter place. So uh, that's it. In terms of knitting, as I said up front, I don't know what got into me. I mean, part of it is I've had a couple, you know, trips downtown in the car. I've been able to get some knitting done there. Also benefited from the fact that a lot of the things that I've finished have been smaller projects. Um, but I mentioned last time, and I forgot to mention this is something that has uh, been going on the last few weeks, but I'm halfway through my hat design class that I'm taking with Nina Macklin Dayton, who, if you remember, was my competition in the uh, Knit Stars Pro-Am um, design competition. But she does a lot of teaching with webs, the online yarn store, and is teaching a hat design course that I signed up for, and it's been a lot of fun. She's an excellent teacher. And so I have my first hat, which is not going to, or is going to look very familiar to you um, if you've been following along for a while. So this is this yarn look familiar to anyone? Uh, this is the Prosperity Ribbed for Your Pleasure hat. Um, it is using the Knit Picks yarn that we used in the design um, competition. So this is the Loops Lux Chunky. Um, again, knit up at an Aran weight, so knit on uh, size 8 needles. This is, and I should have brought it out here, but I don't have it. This is the second of the motifs that was in the Make the Turn scarf that Lewis and I um, designed for the competition. So if you remember, um, I won't go into the whys and whatnots, but as part of that, I had designed this hat, which is the Smock It To Me hat, which takes the smocking stitch. Hmm. <laughs> nice. <laughs> uh, I have not woven in the ends. Um, but I took the smocking stitch, which was one of the motifs on the on the scarf, and turned it into a hat because I thought we were going to have some um, extra extra yarn. So I re did release uh, release this pattern as a standalone um, pattern. You got it free if you had bought the the, the um, scarf pattern and uh, the the pattern pack during the the competition. And I had always wanted to do a second hat to use the other motif, which is this um, Prosperity Rib. Also, have not woven in the ends here. Um, so this is the Prosperity Rib pattern. Um, you can tell, I mean, maybe you can't tell, but it's a little bit bigger. Um, so I designed this as part of the, the hat design class. I mean, I obviously already had um, the idea in my head, but wanted to try a different crown decrease than I'd used on 
um, the other one. They look similar. I mean, there's only so many ways you can skin a cat. Um, this one, um, the two by two ribbing stays a little more intact um, up it. And then this one uh, kind of melds it in together. It's on a five spoke um, decrease. So, uh, but I just wanted to play around when we got to crown decreases in the in the hat class, play around with some 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 different ideas and the way I had to make it happen to get uh, to get to that that decrease had to, had to make it a little bit taller. So I think when so this is not going to be released for a while. It's going to have to wait until after the ride, af probably after Labor Day, quite frankly. And what I think I'm going to do is redo both hats and the scarf in a more available yarn. So this yarn, you can still get the blue and you can still get the pink on the Knit Stars um, uh, online store. It's 75% off um, until they, they run out. Um, but it's not gonna be carried anymore because they're going out of the, the yarn sale, yarn store business. So I, I wanna grab a, a, a more accessible, I don't know if it'll be like a Cascade or something like that, Aaron Waite yarn redo all the patterns in that and then then i will publish it and i think what i'm going to do is to bring the size the length of the hat down a little bit um is tidying tighten up these the sort of bits between the little roundabouts so the you know i think i can't remember i think it's maybe five or six rows now maybe take out a couple of those rows and that'll pull that down enough to give me the uh the amount of um rows that I need to, to, to manage the, the crown decreases. So uh, look for this sometime in the fall. Prosperity ribbed for your pleasure. I will bring it out again once I have the second samples. Um, but it was a really fun exercise in terms of the hat design class and learning a new, um, a new skill in terms of different ways to do, to do crown decreases. Um, speaking of, well, I, that's not an FO, so I'm not going to talk about that yet. But I did... I don't have it because I sent it off already. But if you'll recall from last episode, I had the giant skein of Brava from Knit Picks that read that I was do, working on a sort of commissioned thing. Um, I finished that up as well, and I have photos of it. Um, maybe I'll pop a photo of it in here um, or not because I don't want to give it too much away about it because it is sort of a surprise thing. So anyway, let's just say it is done. I won't pop a picture in there. Um, and I've sent it off to the recipient. As I've said, I've got to make several of these. So we're just testing it out to see how this, this works um, on their end. And then I will uh, start working on a, another one. It'll go pretty quickly the, the second time around. Um, it was another great design sort of experiment because I was creating a, a hat that was a very unusual sh safe shape and size uh, versus one that would fit a normal human head. Um, so that was kind of a fun project. And I'd never, I don't think ever knit like a, just a one by one rib hat and playing around with the decreases. Uh, and that was also a new, um, a new experience because if you just do regular decreases, you have to do a double decrease and it's very, very visible in the, in, in the fabric. But, um, I was able to find some other patterns and kind of look at them and see how they how they did things. And I think I found a way to make it a little less obvious on the second rounds of the design process. So that was my other FO was the giant red hat. Um, and more of the, <laughs> more of those to come in the future. The other thing that I surprised myself by finishing was my well finishing. Getting to a state of near completion is my Geogradient shawl, my Stephen West mystery knit along from 2023. Uh, I still need to weave in the ends. It has been blocked. Um, let's see if I can get the whole bottom of it up there. Um, so it has been blocked. Uh, I just need to weave in the ends and then I'm going to do the fringe on it. Um, very happily surprised with how this turned out after blocking. So I was concerned, especially with this section, um, because there's so much mohair held double in there and all of these 
slip stitches create a much denser fabric. And before it was blocked, it felt very much like upholstery fabric. And I was afraid that it would, all the drape was going to be gone out of that versus these sort of eyelet row sections, which are going to be very, very drapey because they're just, they're just much more open. But in the blocking, um, that softened this up. It, it, it is, it's still obviously denser than the rest of the thing, but it does have decent drape to it. Um, so I was very pleasantly surprised with, with how, that, um, how that all turned out. I... You know, this is not my normal color palette for things that I wear, but I can see with a white shirt, not maybe with this shirt, but with a white shirt, jeans, that it could be a cool look for going out to the con a concert in the evening. It is Undercover Otter, um, Aiden's Yak Silk Merino Base are the, um, uh, are the main yarns, and then I took four different... Fuzzy yarns, they're not all silk mohair. I think one of them is from Blue Fiber Company. One is from Yarnaceous, which I think is a cashmere wool, maybe silk blend. Um, one is from Asylum Fibers. And I can't recall who the, the fourth fuzzy, um, fuzzy yarn is from, but uh, I held those double in uh, in various places. Um, in each section, I tried to have a little bit of mohair um, in there. So it's very, very cozy on the ends where you have a, have a lot of mohair. So uh, oof, when will the French get done? Your guess is as good as mine. My goal is to, in the next uh, week or so, at least have the ends woven in. And then that may also be a post-ride um, summer project um, because I have other things that are going on right now that uh, for hat class and things like that that are gonna as my ramping up on the riding happens I'm gonna have less and less time to, to work on things and so I but it could be also a very good brain dead project one of the problems with these long riding days is I come home and <laughs> I can barely function mentally and working on anything that requires too much thought is, is a problem. So that might be a good one because you're just pulling through, you know, strands of yarn with a crochet hook and, and looping them together. So maybe that's a good TV, TV project. Um, but I was very, very surprised to have three FOs uh, this episode, which I was, I was not planning to, to have any. I thought I was not going to finish anything before the, uh, before the ride, but I guess I should have known I was going to have to do something for, <laughs> for hat class or fail. And so that is where we are on F, uh, whips as well, because I we're supposed to make two hats for hat class. So I've got one under my belt. I think I'm going to end up with three. We'll talk about coming on the needles next. But I did start my second hat. I had been swatching for it, and I don't know if I showed this before, but it is going to be a colorwork hat. Um, and... Here's what I have so far. I've, just to try it, um, and because Nina has sort of encouraged us to, you know, do, do some new things in the class, um, I've done a turned hem. So uh, the brim's about an inch and three quarters. Um, I did a plain stockinette cast on plain stockinette did a turning row and then started the color work and then when i got an inch and three quarters up the color work i um knit the two the two pieces uh together now and someone who's done this before will probably be able to tell me and i am going to bring this up in class next time because i just finished that part of it up um there's a lot of puckering on the end you can see it there's a lot of puckering on the the end side and I'm not really sure why. I was trying to be very, very careful about lining up the stitches so that I was getting one stitch from each edge of the fabric, but then it, it seemed to be getting like ahead of it. I was getting ahead of myself, and so I then, or behind myself, I skipped a couple of stitches um, to, to try to make it up, but the puckering is sort of consistent throughout, so I'm not exactly sure what's going on there. If that's going to come out with blocking, 
if it has to do with the fact that the gauge on the stockinette side is different than the gauge on the colorwork side, quite possibly any or all of those. Um, I'm not going to fret about it too much. I, I will hopefully get some answers from the, the class or from you all if you have some insight. Um, but um, I'm certainly not ripping it out. <laughs> it is uh, probably going to be a knit the rainbow hat anyway. And um, so I'm just going to keep going on it and and see where we uh, see where we end up. It also seems very, very large, even though I thought I had measured my head to get the um, the number of cast on it. It seems, it seems quite large. That also could just be because there's no ribbing to pull it in versus a normal hat that I would make. Uh, so we'll see. It may be gigantic, but like I said, it's probably going to go to knit the rainbow. I am making this in. Uh, the main color is uh, called Sage. It is from Knit Picks. It is a upcycled upcycle alpaca blend i believe i got this in their like big sale last year these were um this whole range was was on sale there's a bunch of the bunch of the different colors in the charity knitting bin and then the color work piece is being done in felici uh r.i.p felici uh in the friendly skies uh colorway so um i wanted to play around with doing color work with a self-striping yarn and um so i thought that this was a good opportunity because it wasn't a gigantic project to to finish up so um we're just in the round and round and round phase until i get to the next design design decision which is going to be um what sort of crown decrease to do um because of just the 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 design itself, maybe it doesn't swirl as much, maybe with more of it, because I feel like it's going to have this kind of slanting thing. I may just do a swirled, um, a swirled top. And then it's a question of how, how far to carry the color work up into the, um, into the crown. Anyway, um, I don't have a name for it. Thoughts. Um, but I like, I like the way the colors are working together. I, I, I think Doing color work and self-striping is kind of a fun, a fun choice. So uh, that is my second hat for a hat class. Um, as I said, I think that's the only other whip that I can show. I have some whips on some future design stuff that I'm working on that I don't feel comfortable showing yet because it's still very early, um, early stages. But in terms of the rest of the hat class, she has encouraged us to try to do a hat or wanted someone in the class to try to do hats with brims and i really didn't think um hadn't really thought about what i might do with a brim and then i decided that i wanted to try to replicate this kind of a gilligan's hat i call it my on golden pond hat um it's like a grandpa hat i, I found <laughs> i've had this thing probably since i was like 10 years old i found it on a camping trip at a state park in texas and picked it up and have had it my whole life and worn it at various points in time um but i thought that might be a fun exercise just to see if i could figure out how to do this with a brim that didn't fall like flat down that kind of did have a little you can see this one obviously has quilting that kind of stiffens that fabric up uh, the tension of it on your head also um pops that that brim out a little bit. Otherwise, I think, I mean, that's going to be the main challenge. I think most of it is going to be, um, you know, kind of pillbox shape because it's got a flat top, um, straight up sides. So I don't think that'll be too, too challenging in terms of figuring that out, but just how to get the rim or the brim to not droop down and just to kind of pop out a little bit, not, not 90 degrees, but like 45 or 30. Um, so we'll see. I'm going to knit this, the sample of, I mean, I think ultimately I would like to do this in some sort of like summery, like linen blend. Um, I think it would have to probably be knit at a fairly tight gauge. So, um, but I don't have time to try to find some linen yarn to make, make that work. And it's really just at this point, a design exercise. So I'm going to knit this up in a DK weight. So it'll go a little bit faster than, um, doing it in a fingering. 
I have this, um, this is a skein, a one of a kind skein from Yarnaceous Fibers. It was supposed to be in the D stash. Uh, I was one of the yard, one of the skeins that I got bought from Maggie uh, for the D stash, but in the photographing process, the skein was kind of loose and I pulled the skein to like, you know, pop it and rewind it. I don't know what happened. Somewhere in the process, it got into like a tangled mess that I ended up having to like cut open, not not cut the yarn, but, you know, snip the, the ties. And I spent like three hours getting into, into this in this ball. So couldn't be sold in the D-stash. It was already wound, <laughs> or at least out of a skein, out of the hank. And so I'm going to use this as the basis for this, um, my on Golden Pond hat. Um, so if you have any thoughts on, I'm, I'm thinking maybe a stitch pattern on the brim that has a little more stiffness to it. So I know like a slip stitch will, just because it's a little denser, will maybe hold that out a little bit more. But if you have any thoughts um, on that, uh, I would love to, to hear them. But, you know, maybe sometime this fall, um, if I figure it out, and find some appropriate linen-y kind of yarn for it. For next spring, I will have a bucket hat um, pattern to uh, to publish. And that's really it in terms of whips and FOs. I still have my Bethel shawl, which is part of the um, spring knit along. I have not made a stitch more progress on it than when I was up in Pacifica. I have wound the other four balls of the yarn because I was going to heed Kelly from Royal Bee Yarn Co.'s advice to um, alternate skeins. And just so happened this morning, I saw a post from uh, Modern Daily Knitting from their Ask Patty Lions column about alternating skeins and she suggests using three i briefly read through it i th I, th I think i get it but i need to go back and and spend a little more time uh understanding it was something basically i think every time you change rows then you have change you know you're changing skeins um it takes what is a pretty sort of low stress easy peasy chill out and knit project to a slightly higher level of chill or less chill because I think dealing anytime you're dealing with multiple balls of yarn on a single on a single project it just adds to the um, stress level even if it's not super stressful it's not pure relaxation so uh, I'm still going to do it because Kelly said to do it and it's her yarn and I think that if she says that because it's naturally dyed, you should really alternate skeins. We're going to alternate the skeins. So uh, I still have that that going on, but I don't expect to make much progress on it unless I just fly through these two hat projects for for um, for hat class. So that is it on the on the knitting front. I am really really looking forward to finishing up this ride and being back uh, from vacation and end of June being able to like look ahead into the fall and have a lot of new projects to um, uh, to talk about so um, until then I'll just have these little things that I'm <laughs> that I'm working on I did have some acquisitions this uh, the last couple of weeks even though I had no plans to buy yarn as you know from this and other things that I've shown uh, I am a bit of a sucker for uh, self-striping yarn. I've had a lot of fun recently playing around with self-striping yarn as I think about designs for the hat project for other things that, that are going on. Um, and I've become friendly with several dyers who are masters of self-striping yarn. So when one of them, Valkyrie Fibers, um, puts together a collection um, that just very, very unique colors and colors that are right up my alley. I have to grab them. So this was a, a collection of four colors based on the Mandalorian show, uh, which I have never watched. Um, but 
these are all based on, I think, different characters and their costumes in, the, in that show. Uh, but the colors are just so good that I, I decided I needed to grab them. And some of them will be socks. Some of them will not. Most of these, I think, are just sort of normal, evenly spaced stripes. One of them is very complex, and you should go to um, her Etsy shop and take a look at it uh, and knit up because it's really, really... And now that I've learned a little bit more about how self-striping socks or are, are, yarns are made, I mean, that took an incredible amount of work. But anyway... Um, there were four colors, so I got all four. Uh, you had to buy all four right now. She's going to eventually sell them individually, but they're all great, so I just grabbed them. So this one is called, and I have no idea what, who the characters are, so Mandalorian fans, forgive me. Chime in down below. But this one is called This Is The Way. But just like all of these sort of like mutity, denim, olives, perfect. Perfect for me. So this is This Is The Way. This one is called The Clone. And I want to say this one's Boba Fett. I mean, I know that name, but I feel like these colors remind me of Boba Fett from Empire Strikes Back. Um, so this one's called The Clone. This one, beautiful teals and grays, is called The Heiress. And then this last one is the one that has the complex... Um, striping pattern. And you can kind of see that because you can see some of the colors in there together. Um, and this one's called The Artist. So you've got black. You've got dark gray, bright, bright orange, purple. Looks to be some mustard in there as well. And like I said, this one has a complex striping pattern where I think there's like smaller stripes or speckles within stripes or something like that. Um, but this is Valkyrie Fibers. I don't know what she has left. This is all on her BFL. So it's 80% superwash BFL, 20% nylon. But she did say that she is going to be selling this as individual skeins. Um, I want to say in May sometime, but soon. Um, they were only available as a four pack um, currently. But those are going to be socks or something. I feel like there could be another knit chat cowl in the making from from some of these, but we shall see. Speaking of socks, I picked up Summer Lee's new book, The Sock Project, um, which just having flipped through it a little bit is a really great um, resource. She goes through four or five different sock recipes, like basic sock recipes. So a top down, down with a heel flap and gusset and a uh, afterthought heel and a forethought heel and toe up with a flegal heel. There's like four or five things and she puts them in order and tells you why she likes one versus, um, versus the other. And then there are a bunch of uh, sort of patterns uh, in, the, in the back as well. So I'm looking forward to spending some, uh, some time with this because sock knitting is something, as always, that I want to be doing more of. And then the other thing <laughs> that I picked up I don't think I mentioned it here, but when I was going through the yarn that I wanted to purchase from the Stitch Out Loud collection, there were several colorways that I thought would be perfect for like a t-shirt. Um, short sleeve, crew neck, t-shirt. And over on Instagram, I said, that's what I want to make with, with these three colors. I know one of them was the fried artichoke color from Yarnaceous. One of them was Ava's Candlelight Vigil from Seismic. And then I think the um, Pearl 2, Pearls Before Wines, Ride Safe, Be Safe, the kind of sunsetty orange and yellow. But they just look all very summery to me. But I was lamenting on Instagram that I could not find a good or any basic tee pattern that was what I was looking for. That was like basically just like a Hanes t-shirt, but knit up in fingering weight yarn. There are tons of what I will say are sort of more feminine designs that are always, that are shown on female models. Um, a handful that are shown on men's, uh, men, male models, but 
have something about them that I just didn't love. They're either super boxy or they have like these really wide necklines and you know how I feel about a really wide neckline. Um, but, you know, certainly modifications, I can um, start to go down that path. But I was like, I was just sort of lamenting the fact that there was no um, pattern available for a men's crew neck short sleeve t-shirt. I say men's, I know fashion's not gendered, but that fit a more typical male silhouette that looked like a typical, just like a t-shirt that you could go to the Gap and buy. Anyway, um, on Ravelry, I did find a photo of one that I was like, that is what I'm looking for. Unfortunately, it was unavailable because it came from a pattern book from 1947. <laughs> so, um, I should say out of this whole post where I lamented the fact on Instagram, I got a lot of great ideas. So someone pointed me to Amy Herzog, who I have her sweater handbook. I can't remember what the name, the official name of the book is, but where she goes through a bunch of sweater styles, gives you basic recipes. And one of my thoughts was, oh, I could just take her set in sleeve crew neck basic pattern and tweak, make it short sleeve tweak the neckline if I needed to. So that was one option. Someone else mentioned um, the Ann Bud books, which are, I think, um, a sweater, a, a knitter's guide to top-down sweaters. And I can't remember what the other one's called, but two of the Ann Bud books. I have her basic sweater patterns for like hats and mittens and thing, that book that I've used since I started knitting. So I thought those were great options. Someone else mentioned that Amy Herzog has her custom fit sort of online pattern generating program where you put in measurements and then it spits out a pattern. So that's another option. And then another person recommended, and I'd never heard of, um, a gentleman named Franco, P-H-R-A-N-C-K-O, has a similar thing to the custom fit where it's a, it's a online program where you pop in your gauge and measurements and then first it spits out how much yarn you'll need for free and then if you go ahead and buy the the pay for it it then pay uh, will put out a pattern um, for the design that you want using those those custom measurements so those were all great options as i mentioned i saw one that i thought was great but it came from a pattern book in 1947 and before all these other things came up I said well let's just see where we might be able to find it and sure enough it was available on eBay I think it was like six dollars and so I got a copy of Chadwick's Red Heart Wools which I assume is what is now Red Heart book number 240 um, inflation has been severe it originally was sold for 10 cents uh, I paid, as I said, like $6. Um, Esther Eden, I have your copy. And it has seven or eight different... I mean, it's, so, it's so great. I mean, it's so like mid-century modern. I mean, I love the little the illustrations. are awesome. Very Mad Men. But anyway, here it is. It's called Crew Captain or something. Um, yeah, Crew Captain. And there it is. But that is essentially what I was basically what I mean, I'm not going to do it striped, uh, but that is sort of the fit and the look that I had been um, that I had been looking for. So um, at some point we were, are going to play around this as expected. I mentioned this when I saw this and I posted on Instagram. It is a very sort of bare bones patterns as I was expecting from a book from, from 1947. It's not quite cast on X number of stitches, make a sweater, but it's, it's, it's not a lot, not a lot more detailed uh, than that. It only, it only has three sizes, so it would have failed the uh, modern size inclusivity test, but uh, it has uh, sizes that will fit, will fit me. So that's, um, that's the important thing for, uh, for right now and and hopefully it'll be a fun exercise in terms of working with a vintage pattern and sort of finding out how much i don't know about <laughs> about sweater construction so um 
in six months' time, when, when, when I'm cursing about this, uh, you can come back and remind me that at one point I was very excited about, uh, about having that. So that was my other uh, acquisition was the men's sweaters, 10-cent booklet from uh, Chadwick's Red Heart Wool. And that is about it in terms of what's been going on, what I've been working on, what I've purchased over the last couple of weeks. As I mentioned back when we were talking about Stitch Out Loud, there is going to be one last, well, actually two last shots for you to get your hands on some of that yarn if you did not um, shop the collection for whatever reason. So first way is, and I don't know the timing on this exactly, but I have the sample skeins that were sent to me from all of the dyers that I used to photograph and put up on the website. And what I decided I'm going to do with those is there's two full sets because I wound up one, I got three, at least three skeins from, from each of the dyers and I wound up one of the skeins to knit my swatches. So I have the two full skeins of everything. Um, I'm going to do a raffle. So I'm going to sell raffle tickets over on my coffee page and I'm going to raffle off those two full collections. So that's 700 and something dollars worth of yarn. And so that will be coming up in the next uh, little bit. I have to figure out the exact, just have to look at the calendar and kind of figure out how long I want to sell the raffle tickets for, when I want to, when I want to have those raffled, with a plan to have them raffled and sent out at roughly the same time that I send out all of the, the rest of the yarn. Um, the other thing that I do is I bought a, a collection's worth of yarn and the notions. And what I'm going to do is make that the grand prize for this season of end aids, knit alongs, and crochet alongs. So I think what I want to do, because that's a lot of yarn, um, it's like 21 skeins of yarn plus notions, is I think I'm going to split that into two. So we're going to have two grand prizes and we'll have a runner, a grand prize winner and a runner up. And then there will be some sort of process where they split that whole collection up between them. The grand prize winner gets first choice and then they'll go back and forth or something like that. Um, but that's what's going to be the grand prize for this season, the season finale grand prize for this season of end aids, knit alongs and crochet alongs. So um, the grand prize, so there, there are prizes for, for whips for each of the, the knit alongs and crochet alongs, but the grand prizes that come at the very end um, only come out of the FO pool. So you'll need to have finished something and posted it um, as an FO in either the Ravelry page or, or um, on Instagram uh, to be into those, those final grand prize uh, drawings. But you can't be in it unless you participate in one of the things up front. So uh, join the spring one. We have almost a month, three, four weeks left and or join the um the pride one coming up so that is it i appreciate you taking some time out of your week to spend it with me if you've enjoyed this please like subscribe do all of the youtube things it continues to help me build this community please let your friends know about the podcast if uh, they're not watching and i will see you in a couple of weeks thanks have a great week